Welcome to this very brief introduction to sight, vision, and learning disabilities. What if, through one simple act, you could prevent years of grief for yourself and your children, save school divisions and health care and taxpayers millions each year, and help your children achieve better and be better students for their teachers? That one simple act is this. Ensure your children and all children in class are assessed for visual impediments to reading and learning. It's easy, inexpensive, and accessible to everyone. This one simple act prevents many problems of behavior that are commonly taken as reading and learning disabilities and attention problems. Assessing vision early protects children from misdiagnosis and inappropriate treatment. It allows for better learning for the child affected, but also for others in class. This presentation explains why parents must ensure their children have vision assessments before grade one, why it's a matter of human rights to do so, and how schools can help ensure better learners, learning environments, and cost savings by encouraging parents to have their children's vision checked. In the classroom, reading is learning, and reading requires very strong vision. Vision is the most critical tool we have as learners in the traditional classroom. Visual demands in the classroom increase quickly with time. We transition from learning to read to reading to learn. There's more pages, smaller fonts, denser paragraphs, and increasingly complicated orthography and grammatical structures. Children are also experiencing an increase in visual stress and bad habits due to greater consumption of media, especially 3D and small devices. If a child is unable to keep up with the increasing visual demands of school, he will fall behind and show other signs of trouble. The degree to which a child's vision is impaired is proportional to his ability to manage reading. Even a small impediment is significant in the long term. You cannot tell if a child is struggling with vision just by looking or with a simple sight test. The big problems are invisible to the untrained eye. There are a few problems with eyesight, and they are fairly easy to understand. Vision, on the other hand, is much more complex than simple eyesight. So if a camera is the eyeball, then vision is the photographer. Vision is so complex, there are many other problems that can arise that are not as easy to see or understand as trouble with eyesight. Vision is tied to many other sensory systems. Look in the near foreground of this photograph and study it for a few moments. Then, quickly look up towards the background and scan across from side to side. This should engage your sense of balance. In this image, there is an appearance of movement when the eyes move, but of course, nothing is moving, just the eyes. We understand something of what is going on here simply by studying, rather, recognizing the patterns of contraction of facial and eye muscles. We can effectively mind read by recognizing and interpreting visual signals from this child's face. This image, on the other hand, looks like it should be something similar, but in the end, it is somehow wrong in some way. Our vision uses our eyes to feed it information to investigate the world, and here it is telling us something is missing, and that this image is a digital graphic and not a real person. It is in the tone and the look of the eyes, but also in the subtle irregularities in the patterns of muscle movements. When vision doesn't work, everything falls apart. Even when it's impaired, students will struggle. Not all children have strong visual skills and abilities. In the same way, some children are much better hockey players. Some children are more adept and gifted for handling the intensely visual tasks associated with classroom life. Poor vision can result from poor or difficult eyesight, impaired or reduced control or alignment of the eyes, impaired visual signal processing, that is to say trouble with perception, and these are all a result of a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Everyone is affected to some degree. Eyesight and vision problems are a cause of many problems in the classroom. Too many children struggle or fall behind in school simply because of difficult vision. Sometimes vision problems are the only problems present, but they cause many other problems that are diagnosed as something else. Because vision problems make near work difficult, children's behavior can be taken as problems with reading, attention, or even other medical concerns. Now to be clear, a child can have perfectly healthy eyes, but still be troubled with difficult vision. Standard medical examination and school testing will not reveal problems with visual function. 
Children with visual functional issues are most often not blind. As a result, they are not likely to be diagnosed and are not eligible for benefits for the visually impaired. Visual dysfunction is not a disease, but it can be caused by disease or impoverishment. It can also be a result of trouble in early development. Developmental optometrists are doctors specifically trained to measure and manage behavioral problems with vision. As we've seen, vision is a much more active process than the more passive eyesight. Our brains use the eyes and vision to search for, use, and find meaning in visual signals from the environment. But the eyes, of course, are only one part of the entire visual process and system. However, that's where vision starts. In the classroom, we are especially interested in the function of the ciliary body and the extraocular muscles. Vision problems are troublesome to explain. They're easy to demonstrate in clinic. But the problem is, vision is most often 25% blur and 75% how it makes you feel. Nearsightedness, for example, feels good for work up close. The eyes feel relaxed. Farsightedness and astigmatism, on the other hand, are strenuous and even painful for work up close. To really understand vision, you first need some background in visual anatomy and basic principles of physiological optics. Well, this sounds complicated, but simply, this is how the body uses the eyes to find and focus on objects of interest. Let's have a look at some of the more common classroom findings. Nearsightedness, or myopia, farsightedness, hyperopia, astigmatism, and muscle control problems, that is to say, oculomotor dysfunction. Blur is one problem in the classroom, but more important than that blur is how comfortable vision is. Blur is easy to address, but if vision is uncomfortable for a child, he will tend to avoid any task relating to near work or reading. In nearsightedness, the ciliary body is very relaxed. Reading and near work are physically easier for nearsighted people compared to those with astigmatism or farsightedness. They have a greater tolerance for reading and can read longer because the ciliary body is relaxed. Near work feels good to nearsighted people. Studies show these children spend more years in school and tend to do better. More professionals are nearsighted than farsighted. Nearsighted kids are also diagnosed more often because they squint when looking at the board. In hyperopia, or farsightedness, the ciliary body is always stressed. It's always working to try to focus light further forward onto the back of the retina. Reading and near work are physically harder, that is, uncomfortable, for farsighted people compared to those with nearsightedness. They have a lower tolerance for reading and cannot comfortably read for long periods because the ciliary body is always working, always tense. Sooner or later, this hurts. This is called asthenopia. So reading hurts farsighted people. This leads to fewer years in class and a lower likelihood to attend post-secondary studies. Farsighted kids are less likely to be diagnosed because if they squint, it is at close distances when their faces are generally turned downwards to read. They will have problems in other areas that seem unrelated to vision. Headaches, pain in neck and shoulders, migraines, fatigue, irritability, inattention, and apparent reading difficulties. Farsightedness can cause amblyopia, that is to say lazy eye, and strabismus, or eye turns, especially inward eye turns, or esotropia. In the case of astigmatism, the ciliary body, as in farsightedness, is always stressed always working. Reading and near work are physically harder for people with astigmatism compared to those with nearsightedness. They have a lower tolerance for reading and cannot comfortably read for long periods because the ciliary body is always working, always tense. This is uncomfortable, even painful in the eyes and in the head. Also, making images clear is difficult. Letters can be confused. This means it is often spotted sooner than simple farsightedness as an eye problem. Astigmatism can also cause amblyopia, or lazy eye. Like farsighted children, children with astigmatism do not enjoy the same level of participation in post-secondary studies and often have other physical and behavioral concerns that are not seen as related to vision, but will often abate completely when vision is addressed. Now, the extraocular muscles take commands from different parts of the brain and move the eye to bring objects of interest into view, like words on a page. Each eye moves independently of and in sync with the other. Movements must be precise, quick, predictable, and easy in order for the child to read unimpeded. 
Problems with motor control can cause trouble with vision, especially with precise and automatic targeting such as is required for reading. Motor control problems are hard to spot for the untrained eye. They are most often painless and are not a frequent cause of blurred vision. Some conditions, like convergence insufficiency, can be painful and cause blurred vision. Troubled motor control means letters and words get mixed up as though out of sequence. Lines might be skipped or reread while reading. It's like reading while riding a bike on a bumpy road. Words and lines are hard to track. In this series, there are two videos, parts 1 and 2, that consider oculomotor dysfunction. There are, however, other problems that arise with vision. Some of these include problems with focusing, eye alignment, amblyopia or lazy eye, targeting, tracking, or problems moving the eyes together. Inside the brain, there can also be trouble with visual information processing or how the brain uses light information. This can lead to objects not making sense to the observer or making it difficult to play with shapes and symbols in the mind. Developmental optometrists can treat these conditions. And these treatments can be especially effective when combined with other cognitive and awareness training. Problems due to visual dysfunction can be avoided, and still less than 15% of children ever have any sort of eye health or visual functional exam before they reach high school. By that time, it's too late. Parents don't know that this is a critical issue, but they need to. Not addressing vision early is a potential risk to children due to misdiagnosis of behavioral problems and the ensuing trouble in school. Vision problems can often look like trouble with attention, depression, and reading trouble. These problems have long-lasting impact on families and children's lives and can lead to other medical complications when vision-based problems are treated as other developmental problems. Visual dysfunction is a real problem, but it has become fashionable in some circles to deny its existence or the role it plays in reading and learning. Something that should be obvious, but is not, precisely because vision is so widely integrated into our senses. You might say, it's right in front of our eyes, but we don't see it. We are a visual being, but it is not merely a matter of opinion as to what it means when vision fails or is disadvantaged from the start. Improper diagnosis of visual problems as medical and behavioral concerns can lead to unnecessary, expensive, and potentially harmful assessment and intervention. Children with visual dysfunction are underrepresented in high school and post-secondary programs. They are, in other words, excluded in many instances. It is a matter of basic human rights to ensure all children have equal access to learning, including unimpeded vision. Ignoring vision does not make visual problems go away especially for those who are affected. Depending on where you look, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, but in the area of 25% of children in every classroom has some mild to severe visual impediment to reading and learning. These are frequently accompanied by medical concerns. The numbers are higher in remote and impoverished communities and ethnicities. Affected children become frustrated with school, and as a result, they are much more likely to disturb in class and much less likely to graduate. This affects their future and their family's future. So in summary, and this is some actual research that you can find fairly easily through any search engine, if you have easy vision it takes less effort to work up close because of relaxed vision therefore you have a higher tolerance for it. You will spend more years in classrooms on average and you will get better grades. As a consequence you'll have more opportunities for higher education. You will earn higher incomes and you're more likely to live in enriched environments likewise for your kids. If you have uncorrected or difficult vision early in school and throughout your school years, any near work will require greater effort for you. This can often be painful and uncomfortable. There will be an intolerance and a decreased interest in books, an aversion to near work generally. There is a greater likelihood to have trouble in school and with parents at home. These children will spend fewer days in classrooms and achieve fewer years of higher education. They will achieve as a consequence lower incomes. They are more likely to be medicated due to misdiagnosis of behavior and concentration problems. And they are less likely to live in enriched environments. And last but not least, the research would suggest that if you are farsighted, you are likely to be less intelligent than your nearsighted neighbor. So in conclusion, a portion of students in all classrooms are struggling against their vision just to handle the daily tasks and assignments they are given. The problems are invisible, but the effects are there to be seen. Poor attention, hyperactivity, distractibility, daydreaming, labored, even painful reading. Academic performance will be lower than anticipated. You'll have somatic complaints, dizziness, fatigue, headache. 
visual complaints such as blur, double vision, trouble focusing. It's very important to recognize that visual dysfunction affects some ethnicities with much higher frequency than others. This absolutely contributes to the marginalization of some people by excluding them from post-secondary studies. It's a matter of basic human rights. And remember, the most important thing, just be sure that your children have their vision checked before grade one. Children with reading and learning difficulties should also be assessed for visual impediments. Unchecked, visual problems become greater impediments as the visual demands of reading increase over time. Prevention of problems associated with vision dysfunction is simple and inexpensive, but it saves millions and a lot of grief. Proper management of visual impediments means leveling the playing field for all people and all students. There is no cost to parents for this service, that is, in Alberta. Some doctors may charge more for extended testing. Most testing is covered under Alberta Health Care. Now again, this is a very simple thing to do. Troubled vision can be measured, diagnosed, and treated, but not just any eye exam or sight test will do. Here is a list of what should be checked for a comprehensive assessment. If your doctor does not provide this service, find one who does, especially if you have concerns about a child's reading and learning.